In the long years of human civilization, one brilliant civilization after another has been developed by people from different regions of the world. But it must be admitted that in the ancient history of mankind, a country as large as China that can maintain long-term unity is absolutely rare. Why has Chinese civilization not only has been continued, but also maintained a high degree of unity? Today, I've come to the headquarters of China National Archives of Publications and Culture. This place is known as the General Database of Bibliology Resources and the Si Jin Bank of Chinese Culture. And I'm here to explore the past and present of the unity of Chinese civilization. In order to better achieve my purpose, I'm seeking the help of Zhang Weiwei, Dean of China Institute at Fudan University and a famous political scientist in China. Professor Zhang, as we all know, China is a country that attaches great importance to unity. When did the unity of Chinese civilization begin? Did it begin with Qin Shi Huang's unification of China? Indeed, uh, China was uh, first unified in 201 BC uh, under Emperor Qin, or Qin Shi Huang. Written language, he unified the measurements, he unified all these were extremely important for China's uh, continuation of civilization. Yet, uh, this whole sense of unity, sense of unification, can be traced way back uh, earlier, at least 4,000 years before China unification. Wherever you go, say along the Yangtze River, Yangshao Kaoshe, or along the Liaohe River, Hongshan culture, or the uh, Yangtze River, Liangzhou culture, you see 10 different images of dragon. That shows a lot of cultural exchanges at that time before different regions, different parts of China, of this vast continent. So a lot of commonalities already there. Yeah, you mentioned dragons, but the different social backgrounds between the East and the West have led to different interpretations of the dragons. The positive image of the dragons in the East has deeply rooted in the hearts of Chinese people. And there seems that they may have a mysterious force uh, that always brings back the Chinese people together, even after periods of division, they always would eventually move towards unification. As I mentioned, this image of a dragon, it's always a positive force in Chinese culture. If you look at the pen holder, there's this uh, relief of the dragon image. And see this kind of image in different cultures within China, way before China's first unification. And then uh, we mentioned this uh, grand unity. This concept was first mentioned in this famous book called Gong Yang Zhuan, yeah. And he made this idea, Da Yi Tong, yeah, grand unity. You have the current border of China, and then you see uh, uh, in different dynasties uh, the shape of China changes over time. And for instance, this one is called the Record of Mission to Ryukyu, which was a publication of the roughly Ming Dynasty, which means uh, mid 16th century. It's about uh, uh, his trip to. Ryukyu Island to Diao Yu Dao, and same with um, some other books. This moment is called the record of uh, water and soil in Linghuai, which is third uh, century AD, yeah, much earlier, and uh, about Taiwan, yeah. So a lot of historical record which show Taiwan part of China. Uh, as you 
see this exhibition, uh, there is a tremendous capacity for Chinese civilization to absorb different cultures into its own culture. And then in China's long history, uh, different ethnic groups have also gradually, you know, live in peace with each other and draw on each other's strengths. For instance, if you go to Xinjiang, it originates from Huigu's uh, people and from uh, Mongolians, from uh, Tubos, and from the Han Chinese. They have mixed blood. Uh, even in terms of religions, you know, they started with uh, Samanism and then uh, turned to Buddhism and then, then turned to Islam. So many ethnic groups and cultures are developing here in the land of China. Won't they conflict with each other? And one important feature of China's religious tradition as compared with, uh, say, European religious tradition is that we did not have religious wars seeking common ground while reserving differences. Cultural policy is religion is religion. It cannot interfere in politics because Chinese have this uh, what we call the Tong Chun Yi. It's always what we call uh, unity in diversity. And I can give you another example. I'm from Shanghai. I've lived in Beijing and Guangzhou. There are dialects. The divergence of these three dialects are greater than German language, English language, and French language. Yet, we live under one roof of one civilization for thousands of years. And people still have this kind of divergence and differences. But that really, uh, we can tease each other, make fun of each other, and enjoy our differences. So it's also the feature of what we call the unity in diversity, or diversity in unity. Yes. The Chinese people have lived in the same civilization for thousands of years. They have built a unified Chinese civilization. They together have built a unified Chinese civilization and a strong nation that cannot be destroyed. In my conversation with Professor Zhang, I learned from him a new concept, Jia Guo Yi Ti, meaning a shared destiny of individual families and the country. And um, you know, the Chinese word for country is also very interesting. It's made up of two characters. One is state, and the other is family. So the idea of a country for Chinese is a relationship between small families of many, 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 millions, millions, and millions of families. So it's always connected. We call state family or family state in one. Put your own family house in order, run the country well, and bring peace to the world. On the other hand, especially in contemporary China, uh, China is one of the few uh, large countries that have suffered from many wars. We call it a century of accumulations. Chinese have a very fresh memory when the state and the country is lost, family is also lost. Tens of millions lost their lives. So this uh, kind of feeling of uh, state, family, or family state in one has further been consolidated in today's China. When we see China wants to bring together all the countries and always talks about the mutual prosperity for all human beings. Whenever China was disunited, disintegrated, a lot of wars and bloodshed. So, Unity is always associated with uh, uh, peace, harmony, development, prosperity. Well, disunity 
associated with the chaos, wars, famine. As a result, it becomes part of Chinese gene, unity, prosperity is always good. From the starry sky to the unity of pluralism, the history of China is a great history in which all the nationalities jointly create, develop, and consolidate unity. The unity of culture and nationality has become the basis of the national unity, while the unity of the country has further promoted the unity of culture and nationality and ultimately formed the outstanding unity of Chinese civilization.